All right, so today I'm gonna teach you how to predict when your tank will run empty. Now that could be any kind of tank. It could be a water tank, it could be an oil tank, it could be a chemical tank, it could be really any kind of tank that you wanna predict when it's going to be empty. Now what we're gonna talk about today assumes that you have a tank level sensor. And if you don't, don't worry, we've got you covered. We'll get to that in a little bit. But first, let's jump in to learn how we can predict when our tank will be empty. Let's go. All right, so our goal is to predict how much time we have until our tank goes empty. So we need to account for three variables here. The first is the current volume of water in the tank. The second is the rate at which the tank is filling, or we could call that the inlet flow. And then the third is the rate at which the tank is emptying. We call it the outlet flow. So let's do a little whiteboard math here. First things first, we need to calculate the current volume. And the reason we need to do this is that some tank sensors will only give you a level reading, perhaps in inches, feet, or centimeters, and not a volume reading like gallons or barrels. So the first thing we need to do if we only have tank level is convert it to volume. Now this obviously depends on the shape of your tank. For simple shapes like boxes and vertical cylinders, this is pretty easy. Said another way, if the cross-sectional area of your tank is constant from top to bottom, you can use a simple equation. And we'll cover that in a second. If it's not simple and if it's not constant, a lot of times you'll need to get what is called a strapping table. And that can come from your tank manufacturer uh, and you can often find that online. So, for a simple tank where we can use that equation, the volume is just the level of fluid in the tank multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the tank. So if your tank is a box, that's width times length. If your tank is a cylinder, that's pi times the radius squared. So here's an example of a vertical cylinder with 10 feet of water in it and a diameter of eight feet at the bottom. First, we get the radius. That's half the diameter, so four feet. Square that and you get 16 feet squared, then multiply it by pi, and you're at about 50 and a quarter square feet for your cross-sectional area. Multiply that by the level of 10 feet and you've got a water volume of about 503 cubic feet. Now an important note here, you want your volume reading units to match the numerator of your flow reading units. So if your flow rates are in cubic feet per second, for example, you're good to go. But if they are in gallons per minute or barrels per day, for example, you'll need to do some conversion. In this example, our flow rates are in gallons per minute. So to convert cubic feet to gallons, I'll multiply by 7.48, which is how many gallons are in a cubic foot. So now I know that with my current level reading of 10 feet, I have about 3,760 gallons of water in my tank. Now let's take a look at the flow rates. To calculate how many days until empty, we first need to know the net flow, that is the difference between the inlet flow and the outlet flow. In this case, the net flow is equal to the outlet flow minus the inlet flow. So, for example, if we had an inlet flow rate of one gallon per minute and an outlet flow rate of three gallons per minute, our net flow rate would be two gallons per minute out of the tank. Now, we are assuming your flow rate readings are in the same units. If not, you'll need to do some conversions to get them to match. Another note is that since we are trying to calculate days until empty, we treat flow out of the tank as a positive number. That makes our math a little bit simpler. So with our net flow in hand, we divide the current tank volume by the net flow. So our current volume is 3,760 gallons and our net outflow is two gallons per minute out of the tank. So we divide 3,760 gallons by two gallons per minute, cancel out the units and get 1,880 minutes. So we now know that our tank will be empty in 1,880 minutes. Of course, it's not a very helpful way of visualizing it. If we wanted to convert it to hours, we could further divide by 60 minutes per hour, cancel units, and see that we have 31 and a third hours till empty. We could continue to convert this to days by dividing by 24 hours per day and see that we have a little more than one day until our tank runs empty. And there you have it. That's how you can predict when your tank will run empty. Now, one of the things we know is that most people don't want their tank to run completely empty. So, what if we wanted to calculate the number of days until our tank was almost empty? 
We can do this in one of two ways. We can either calculate when a tank will have a certain volume of water in it. Say we want to predict when it is 500 gallons left. To do this, we just subtract the target volume from the current volume before we divide by the net flow. So in our example, we'd have 3,760 gallons, which is our current reading, minus 500 gallons, which is our target reading. So we get to a difference of 3,260 gallons. We divide that by two gallons per minute flow, divide it by 60 minutes per hour, and we see that we have a little over 27 hours until the tank has 500 gallons left. Alternatively, we could calculate our target as a percentage of the tank capacity. This is especially useful if we want to apply this calculation across many tanks of different sizes. So let's look back at our example. Let's assume the tank is 20 feet high. With a level of 10 feet in it, that means the tank is currently 50% full. So what if we wanted to know when the tank would be 10% full, or 90% empty, depending on if you are a glass half full, glass half empty kind of person. To do this, we need to change our calculations to act as percentages of the total tank capacity. Let me show you how. First, we need to know the capacity of the tank in the correct units. This tank is 20 feet high, and we calculated the cross-sectional area as 50 and a quarter square feet, which means the capacity of the tank is 1,005 cubic feet, which is about 7,520 gallons. Now let's go back to our math where we calculate the time until we had 500 gallons left. First thing, we'll replace that 500 gallon target with a 10% target. Then, to make the math a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and convert our flow rate out of 2 gallons per minute to 120 gallons per hour. Then, I take every number in that equation and I divide it by 7,520 gallons to get those numbers as a percentage of the tank capacity. So, 3,760 current volume reading is 50% of the capacity, as we discussed. And 120 gallons per hour equals about 1.6% of the tank capacity per hour, meaning that with the current net flow out, our tank is losing 1.6% of its capacity each hour. Now, I subtract my current volume of 50% by my target of 10% to get a difference of 40%. And then I divide that number by 1.6% per hour, and I can see that my tank will be empty in 25 hours, or just over a day. And that's how you do it. Now, if all that seems a little bit too easy, it's kind of because it is. And the reality is that typically our inlet flow and our outlet flow aren't static. They change all the time. We might get dumps of fluid into the tank. We might get bulk pulls out of the tank. We might get deliveries in. We might constantly fluctuate how much we move in and out. I mean, it's a dynamic process. And so we can't always rely on this static math to predict when our tank will be empty. Fortunately, if you have a well aware tank level monitor like the one I'm holding here, we have some really smart tricks that actually make this process really easy. So I'm gonna show you how some of that works so that you can predict when your tank will run empty without having to do all that math. All right, so we are logged into the WellAware web app here. And what we are looking at is the trend screen of a chemical tank. And what we are particularly looking at is the product volume in that tank represented by this black line changing over time. This is over the course of about two months. What we can see is at the high point, we've got roughly 350 gallons, maybe close to 400 gallons in that tank, and that it's emptying over time. Now there are a couple of things we need to call into view here. The first is these anomalies where we're actually delivering a large amount of chemical in the tank in a very short period of time. And these are anomalies that would affect that net flow reading that we were calculating earlier. So we have to keep that into account. The other thing is that the rate of emptying is changing and we need to account for that as well. We can see that after this particular delivery, the tank starts to empty much faster than it was before. And so we need to account for that as well. Now. We could do all of this math ourselves, and if we had flow meters on site, we could obviously use those flow meter inputs to try to do that. But what if we didn't have a flow meter? Well, fortunately, the WellAware application makes this really simple because we automatically calculate the observed empty rate using some advanced analytics on this product volume data. And so I'm gonna add the observed empty rate to this trend screen, and you will actually see it here in this purple line. 
So during this period of time, we can see that the tank is emptying at around six to seven gallons per day. And then after this particular delivery, that empty rate jumps up to around 20 to 21, 22 gallons per day. So we can see that the rate at which that tank is emptying actually nearly triples in this time period. We need to account for that. The other thing you'll notice, and this is thanks to some smarts in the way that this is calculated, is that this line accounts for these deliveries. So we don't actually treat these deliveries as big changes in the net flow. We understand that those are bulk changes in the current volume, but aren't necessarily affecting the overall inlet and outlet flow in steady state. And so we account for those and we can actually calculate when that tank is emptying. Now, why is this great? Well, first of all, it happens automatically. It happens in the background. You don't have to do the math. And the other thing is that it does account for those anomalies, but we can actually use this same principle using those analytics, using that platform and calculate the time to empty automatically. And we've done that here. So I'm gonna chart this on the screen and you can actually see in this green line, the number of days until the tank is empty as a prediction based on the current volume reading and the observed empty rate. So I can see that when this tank is full to 350 gallons, I've got 44 days until it gets empty. And then over time, I see that number drop about halfway through, I'm now at 31 days. And now look at this, we get a tank being filled and so we would expect the days to empty to increase. However, it's actually decreasing because we've accounted for that increase in rate. So we can see at this point, we've got 17 days to empty because I've tripled the rate at which my tank is emptying. And sure enough, we can see down here when I've got about only 15 gallons left in the tank that I've got zero days to empty, as in this tank's gonna run empty today. So the nice thing about this is that I can actually set up an alarm on this time to empty and get an alert on my phone or on my computer when my tank is about to run empty. So this is how you would do that. You come in here to the alarms application on this particular site. We'd create a new alarm condition. So I'll click add new. I'm gonna select the chemical tank, the time to empty point, and I'm gonna create a low threshold alarm because I want to know when the time to empty drops below a certain number of days. So I'll call this alert almost empty, little exclamation point so I pay attention. And I'm gonna set that low threshold to four days. So basically what this means is anytime that measurement, which is automatically calculated, drops below four days, I am going to get a text message on my phone and an email in my inbox saying, hey, it's time to get that tank filled.